Hi everybody, how's it going? I'm Bird Snake, and today I'm just going to share with you some camera settings that you can use on any camera that has manual mode that will be great for vlogging. The reason I'm making this video is because I wish I had known this stuff last year when I was starting out. Um, when I watched some of my older videos back, aside from just cringing at being uncomfortable in front of the camera, I also am a little dissatisfied with the video quality and a lot of it has to do with my camera settings. So I'm just going to break down a few tips that any vlogger with a DSLR or a point and shoot that has manual mode can use. So the first setup is going to be for when you're on the go and the lighting changes. So the first thing you're going to do is set your shutter speed to either 1 60th of a second if you're in the Americas, North or South America, and 1 50th of a second if you're in Europe or most of the rest of the world. And you can Google whether your country uses NTSC or PAL. If you use NTSC, then it's gonna be 1 60th, and if you use PAL, then it's gonna be 1 50th. What you're doing is allowing your shutter speed to be in sync with the electricity in your country. So just take my word for it. You're gonna either go with 1 60th or 1 50th. Google it and do some research if you're curious. It's kind of interesting. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is set your aperture to the lowest number. The lens I'm using right now only goes down to 4.5. My point and shoot camera goes down to 1.8. In general, you're gonna to wanna to set this as low as it'll go, and I'll talk in a little bit about why you might want to raise this number, but just go ahead and set your aperture or your f-stop number to the lowest it goes. The third setting is white balance. So if you're gonna be in natural light, daylight, shade, um, and indoors places that have like blue looking lights, like fluorescence, anywhere you're at where the lights look blue to you, then go ahead and set your camera to daylight and just leave it like that. Now, if you're in a place where the lights have more of an orange glow to them, like a soft white, more of a yellow color, then you're gonna to need to adjust this to tungsten or just put it on auto. It really bothers me when skin tones and things like that get too blue, so I, I pretty much default to daylight. You'll have to play with this and find out what works best for you and what works best in the situations that you most often vlog in. The last setting for your on-the-go vlogging setup is your ISO number, and you're gonna to wanna to set this to auto. The reason you're gonna set your ISO to auto is so that if you walk outside into the daylight, it can adjust to a lower number so you're not blown out. And then if you walk inside and somewhere has less lighting, the number will automatically adjust to a higher ISO to compensate for the low light. And this is what allows you to just walk around and vlog without having to worry too much about whether the lighting is too bright or too dark. So that's it, that's it for just an on-the-go vlogging setup. So I'll go over it real quick one more time. 1 60th if you're in the Americas, or 1 50th if you're pretty much anywhere else. Set your aperture or f-stop to as low as it'll go. Set your white balance to daylight if you're going to be shooting natural light or automatic if you're not sure. And set your ISO to automatic. And this will allow you to just walk and talk. When I'm leaving the house for the day, that's how my camera's gonna be set. And that way, the camera will compensate for all the light or dark situations that I might be in. So the next setup is for when you vlog in a room and it's like where you vlog from. For instance, my room here, I have some specific settings that work great for it and I'll tell you how to figure out what those settings are for your camera. First, you're gonna set the shutter speed to 1 60th or 1 50th, just like before. Next, you're gonna lower the aperture or f-stop to as low as it'll go. Then after that, you're gonna set the white balance for the room. So in here right now, I have mostly daylight spectrum or blue looking light bulbs. So I'm gonna set my camera to daylight. But if you're working in a room that has mostly soft white or yellow looking lights, then you're going to want to set it to tungsten or something else. Just do a little trial and error. Do a test shoot and try different white balances. That's the best way to do it. Just set it to daylight and be like, hi, this is daylight. Set it to tungsten and be like, hi, this is tungsten. And then watch it back and then watch it back later. And you want your skin tones to be warm and natural, not overly red and not overly blue, basically. And then last, you're going to set your ISO for the room. So, what you're gonna do is change your ISO settings until they're not too dark and not too bright. If your camera has metering, you want the metering to land right in the center, so you can do it like that by taking some pictures. If you don't know how to use your camera's metering, then no worries, just set your ISO so that the picture's not too dark. And that's how you set your camera up for a space where the lighting is always gonna be consistent. So I'll run down those settings real quick one more time. You're gonna set the shutter speed to either 1 60th or 1 50th, depending on where you live. Set the aperture to as low as it'll go set the white balance for the room, and set the ISO for the room. And that's how you get good looking camera settings for whatever room you're gonna be working from. I urge you to write those down or put them in Google Keep or wherever you keep notes. If it's a month down the road and you've changed all your camera settings and you've been on vacation or, or whatever, you can just check your notes and set your camera back to how it was. 
I'm going to talk about some exceptions to the rule. So the first exception I'll talk about is adjusting your aperture. I've been telling you to set it as low as it will go and that allows the most light into the center of your camera. Basically setting the aperture, the, the lower you set it, the bigger it gets and the more light can come in. So a time when you might want to raise your aperture is when you're out in bright sunlight. Your auto ISO might go as low as it can go and the picture might still be too bright and that's when you would raise your aperture. Another time you might want to raise your aperture is if you want to have your your foreground and your background in focus. Like on my point and click, if I set if I set the aperture down to 1.8, then my face will be in focus, but the background will be blurred out, which looks super cool, unless I'm trying to show you what's behind me and talk to you at the same time. And when I'm doing that, then I'll raise the aperture up to four or five. And you can go even higher than that depending on the lighting. And that creates a bigger amount of depth that will be in focus. So one more time, the two instances that I really raise my aperture would be if it's just way too bright outside, I'll raise it up so that less light gets to the sensor. Or if I want to have the background and the foreground in focus, if I want to change the depth of field to allow more focus, then I'll raise the aperture. The other thing you might want to do is change your ISO if there's a lot of bright light behind you or if it's really dark behind you but you want it to be visible. Um, and I'll show, you, I'll show you how. So here I am with 1600 ISO and my face is clearly visible but my camera wants to auto adjust because of these bright lights back here. My camera wants to auto adjust to like 200. So 200 looks something like this. It's not horrible but it's not great. Like there's just not enough light on my face but it looks really good back there. The camera's compensating for that light back there. So this is the time when I would raise my ISO up like this so that the whole picture will be lit up. I know it's a little blown out back there, but now you can see my face right. And most of the time when you're vlogging, that's what you're gonna be going for. The other thing you might wanna do is, if you have a dark background behind you, but you want it to be visible in the shot, you might allow for your face to be a little bit blown out so that your background will show. Let me, let me, let me give you an example. If I was gonna do a shot from right here in front of my record wall, and I wanted the album covers to show back there, I would adjust my ISO to be higher, and my face will get a little bit blown out, but you'll be able to see the records. So my face is pretty blown out, that's probably too much, so. Right about there is pretty good, and I did that just by raising and lowering the ISO until you could see the records back there and you could see my face. So those are some camera settings that'll work for pretty much anyone that wants to be able to vlog on the go or anyone that wants to set up a room where they vlog. Uh, just start out with those settings and then adjust them if you need to. Try, try other things. Just do test shoots. Like I said, just hit record, talk to the camera, tell it the settings you've dialed in, and then stop and change the settings. Hit record, talk to the camera, tell it the settings you've dialed in, stop, change the settings, and then watch those back and you can see the settings. That's how you can review your different settings and try them out. So go ahead and dial in the settings we went over and try them out. I'm confident that you'll be able to get some great footage and definitely experiment because you know you might discover something that I didn't even know about. And if you know something that I didn't know about in this video, then leave me some comments down there, guys. Leave me some comments because we're always learning. Smash that like button with a camera sensor. Destroy that like button with a point and shoot. Caress that like button with daylight spectrum light bulbs. I'm Bird Snake. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, I cannot tell. That's why you must subscribe and click the bell.